This one's a waved umber, one that would very well camouflage. Look like bark on a tree. He's going. We have around 37 uh, different distinct habitats on the island. Over a thousand species of vascular plants, 8,000 species of moth, and a good variety and biodiversity generally for an island of our size. At only three square miles, Alden is similar in size to Sark, the one with no cars, much smaller than Jersey and Guernsey. <laughs> But uniquely, it was the only Channel Island to be fully evacuated when Germany invaded in 1940. Hitler had an empty island to turn into a grim and barren fortress using slave labour, with terrible cost in human suffering and loss of life. Thankfully, today, that strategic location has happier consequences. Alderney is in a really pivotal location at a crossroads where hundreds of thousands of birds pass through heading north to the UK but probably 50 times as many birds are also passing through Alderney heading along the continental coastline into eastern, northern, central Europe and up into Scandinavia. It was the Romans who were first to fortify Alderney. Their fortress is currently home to the bird observatory. More battlements were then added by the Tudors and through succeeding centuries until the Victorians secured the coastline with no less than 14 forts. There's not an awful lot of evidence for large amounts of woodland on the island, probably from the Roman period or before Bronze and Iron Age periods. Woodland now is probably recovering to a level where it might have been before the war, but we hope in the near future it will exceed what's been in the island for quite some time. We're monitoring by way of bird ringing over 10,000 birds a year and that comes with quite a variety of uh, unusual vagrants as well as monitoring the populations of our, our commoner birds which is really the essence of our work. For me the bats are an amazing thing. We've picked up 10 different species across the island this year so far and that brings up to the total number of species we've ever recorded on the island to 11 which is pretty amazing considering the whole of British Isles is only 18 species recorded and this woodland area is an important site for things that glean off vegetation. The woodland that we have here today has a niche and it has a role to play but it's not particularly dynamic woodland or diverse woodland and it's not very well established. We've got a broad variety here. There's a fair amount of introduced species, quite a lot of conifers and spruce and a lot of British native species. In terms of which the birds choose, they'll take the tallest tree first even if it hasn't got so much cover and then make their way down into other trees. As a charity we've been pushed since we're formation 20 something years ago to try and plant trees but the problem with that is that often those places that people see as barren are those biodiverse rich coastal grasslands and heathlands so we found an area of the old farmland that was abandoned post-war what had largely become rank grass and a scrub planting native species with a few intermixed species we find in the other islands to give flowering and fruiting species to increase the, the food sources for bird life uh, and insects and just try and create something that will be rich for wildlife They've doubled the amount of island cover here over the last 10 years from the planting of about, I think, 12,500 odd trees. Um, and as you can see behind us, this is sort of the early stages of regeneration, so it's going a bit scrubby at the moment, but there's a few young trees coming through. Our focus is just to promote the use of species we know were present here through the longer term period, as they will support a greater diversity of insects and are more likely to be robust uh, as our environment changes. And they took soil cores to try and see what was here before and try and understand what the best trees to plant were. We've gone for species that are present in pollen analysis in the last 10,000 years. Oak, ash, hazel, beech are all present within those pollen lists uh, and we're planting for those. Ash is a good local tree and is now going to be hit by ash dieback. That's put us back a little bit but we're trying to let sort of the individuals that do survive, we're leaving them and trying to get that genetic resistance within the woodland. The survival rate for the trees so far is high, probably 60 or 70 percent and we weren't expecting that sort of survival rate because there's little aftercare beyond a, a bit of tree guard maintenance. So we hope that the woodland will cope with ash dieback reasonably well. The community woodland was planted and is maintained by volunteers and here also the military legacy is being reclaimed for good use. The bunkers up here are remnants of the Second World War. We have the Commandant's Bunker here, which is the, the command centre for the island if the island was actually attacked. And bunkers like this, which we believe is probably an old magazine store. Uh, and we've repurposed those wherever we can. It's a hard history in many ways, both the wartime but also the industrial landscape. But nature beds it in and we might as well use those structures to provide information points, shelters. And the, the woodland bunker we have here is an ideal planting bunker, but also a classroom. The other day we had some kids in, had some story time in there. And we're just getting a solar powered energy supply for that sorted and that's really key for us. It's not only Alderney's buildings that are unusual. 
The trees can take unexpected forms too. This is a blackthorn wood, the timber kept no taller than one foot by Atlantic winds. Meanwhile, on the sheltered side of the island, ivy grows to become a tree. Maritime ivies grow very well on Alderney, and where there aren't tall trees for it to climb up, it will establish its own stem, and they're standing 15, 20 foot high, and they're incredibly rich for wildlife. We don't want to fiddle too much, because as we're learning things like rewilding, we're realising that too much active management can actually not be beneficial. But at the moment, we're not seeing declines, which is really beneficial. So we're trying to keep things in the state that they currently are. At this time of year, the birds are beginning to make their way back south again. In fact, this morning we recorded the first of the autumn on its reverse migration. That bird almost certainly would have travelled from the UK 80, 90 miles without a rest over the sea. And most birds, the first thing they look for is a tree to land in and rest. Those little wings take them on quite a journey.